Welcome to the Equipping You in Grace podcast, hosted by Dave Jenkins. The Equipping You in Grace podcast is a podcast about helping Christians develop a biblical worldview in a conversational tone about issues inside and outside the church. Now, for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. All right, guys, welcome back to the Equipping and Grace podcast. My name is Dave, and I'm the host for this show. And with me today is Dr. Ibrahim. Uh, sir, can you d- tell us briefly about your life, marriage, ministry, and some of the ministry projects that you're working on? Thank you so much for having me, Dave. And I am I was born and raised in Egypt um, in a Christian family, nominal Christian family. And when I was uh, nine years, nine and a half years, old um i heard the good news of christ and i followed him and um, years after that i began preaching and i moved to the states to get uh, education for my preaching at which time i um, i felt i am so attracted to the study of middle eastern culture and islam and uh, i did my master's focusing on this topic and then my phd and um, that's what i do my wife and i live in kentucky and i'm grateful for the opportunity to talk with you about reaching your muslim neighbor with the gospel yeah that's wonderful thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself brother Uh, can you tell us about this wonderful book that you've written reaching your muslim neighbor for christ uh, why you wrote it and how it's being received it has been really uh, well received, and I I hear from the publisher of the remarkable um, sales the book has done in the first couple of months, and I feel like I'm honored. It is basically I I wrote many books on uh, academic matters, Quran, Muhammad, Islam, uh, Muslim conquests. Um, conversion to Islam, all academic works or semi-academic, some helpful resources for the uh, classroom. But this book, Reaching Your Muslim Neighbor with the Gospel, is the preacher in me, the one that is more about my experience growing up in the Middle East Mm -hmm. and interacting with my neighbors, mostly Muslims, my co-workers, my classmates and all this and that's why i felt like i want to write down my story of interacting with muslims and to help my especially my american friends understand what is the muslim mindset what is the overarching islamic what is how how can we think about muslims and islam uh, in today's world so that's how I put it uh, in this between the two covers, you know. So. Yeah, it's a uh, it, that's that's well said. I I definitely picked up on that as I was reading the book. I thought that you know it was really well written and very helpful um, for the average Christian who may not know much about you know Islam other than you know what they've heard on the news since nine eleven and other incidents as well. And so I think that you bring a lot of clarity to that particular discussion, um, and it's a it's an important it's an important book that you've written for that reason, uh, yeah. so that we can really know, you know, hey, this is what my Muslim neighbor or my, yeah, my Muslim neighbor believes and how he thinks, and like you said, his mindset. So I think that's really good, brother. Yeah. yeah. What Very are cool. what are what are some of the most significant barriers to evangelism with? Uh, Muslims you're you're moving between two different worlds because Christianity and Islam are really strong religions when it comes to particularities specifics of faith and whenever you are interacting with a Muslim you're basically moving between two worlds one world of your biblical worldview of your understanding of reality. We call this worldview, understanding life and death 
and the future and eschatology, next life and all this. So matters related to practice and worship. Hmm. So Muslims take the idea or form their worldview, their mindset through the Quran, Muhammad sayings, what the mosque's imam leader says, while you as a Christian begin from a very different presupposition. And moving between these two worlds is, is, is pretty uh, challenging sometimes. So some of the barriers, I would say, cultural are cul cultural and some are theological. So cultural, because many Muslims just tend to believe that um, Christ, like uh, um, America is Christian. So Hollywood is Christian. I'm like, no, uh, no, 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 no. So there is a cultural misunderstanding here, actually. And that's a barrier because they begin from a, a presupposition that is far from reality. Mm. Uh, and they begin with this because in, in Islam, the religion and the state, for the most part, are combined. So when they think of America, they think, okay, America must be Christian. So America and Christian, okay, that's Christianity. So this dancer in Hollywood is a Christian. Even she's wearing a cross, you know, only. Oh, I'm a what? You know, all this, this cultural misconception. But there is also some theological misconceptions, including, for example, how Muslims uh, think that Christians worship three gods, or how some some informed Muslims think of the Trinity as um, Mary married God and they had Jesus as son. Of course, that's among some religious Muslims. They think this way because the Quran actually teaches some sort of this uh, Trinity. Um, and also some Muslims believe that uh, Christians are, um, do, they don't have, like the Bible is corrupt. So all this is to say you have at least two levels of barriers or misconceptions, cultural and theological. And in my book, I articulate both and give some tools to help my reader understand how to deal with these barriers. Yeah, I think that's really important, um, you know, because, yeah, I, I think that's really, really a good thing that you just said about the cultural and then the theological, because I think there are a lot of misconceptions, uh, probably uh, like just from a Christian perspective, I can say being a Christian my, the majority of my life, there are a lot of misconceptions about you know, Muslims among Christians, and then I can I can imagine on the other side of the equation that there's a lot of misconceptions uh, on um, from Muslims with and about Christianity, and you know that's kind of understandable in a way because we project this image, you know, from uh, our media projects this image of what a Christian is, and so it's understandable that they would have that, and I think. Um, you know, and I'd be interested to hear what you have to say as well. I think just having that those kind of conversations, opening this that dialogue can and having open and honest communication with one another could be really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we need to talk, and I always encourage my friends here: befriend Muslims. Don't treat Muslims as the unknown far away person, but be take initiatives in getting to know them as friends, hear about their life experience and so forth. It's always awesome. Yeah, that's really good. In, in the book you write, we should always distinguish Islam from Muslims. Why is that so important? Because this is actually one of the most important elements that I always teach. Islam is a set of beliefs, um, different ideas about faith and about life and about God and about death. That's a set of belief beliefs. So it's a, a belief system. While Muslims are people, humans, 
in uh, in 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 my estimation, you should evaluate any ideology. You should be able to critique or evaluate or assess any claims, any religious claims. So Islam as a set of belief system or as a, a set of beliefs, you can actually, you are recommended to think critically about that. And some of these uh, aspects you will dislike, normal, okay? Now, Muslims are human. That's a different thing. Humans are on God's own image and they are loved by God and we Christians are called to love our neighbors. So I should love Muslims even though I am willing to evaluate and assess their religion. I could dislike elements of the religion, but I love Muslims as my neighbors who God asked me to reach out and to speak the gospel to them. That's why I always say we need to distinguish both. Yeah, that's that's really good. Another way I, I think about that is, you know, we're not attacking the person we're dealing with, and we're not even necessarily attacking the idea, but we are dealing with the, the worldview behind ideas because, as Archie Sproul once said, everyone's a, a theologian, and so… If everyone's a theologian, then we have to deal with the theology that that people believe, and that means yeah. with Muslims, we're we're not attacking them personally, we're not even attacking what they believe. We're just dealing with their uh, worldview and what they believe because we're commanded to contend yeah. for the faith once for all, deliver to the saints. And Paul says in Second Timothy that we're supposed to do that with gentleness. So yeah, uh, um, yeah, it's really good. True. What is what is one of the major theological misconceptions that Muslims have about Christianity, and why is that so significant? I think one of the the significant misconceptions, as I mentioned earlier, is that Christians are not monotheists, because in Islam, Christians worship either three gods, little g, or they are associating partners with God, which is the most horrible sin in Islam. It's called the shirk. So that's one theological misconception that many Muslims think about it, about Christians to, to, to be polytheists. Now, has this actually been from the earliest point of Islam? True, yes, I would say, because the earliest text of Islam, supposedly the Quran, clearly states that some Christians, some, not all, some Christians have actually um, deviated from the truth as they believed in the Trinity. And the Quran clearly states, don't say three, only one. And that's why the, the, the doctrine of the monotheism in Islam, Tawheed, which is strict monotheism, is in part a clear opposition to what the Quran claims about Christianity, that these guys worship three gods or a triune god. Well, once you begin studying what the Quran actually says about Christians, you will see that, well, it's actually not saying the truth about Christianity. It's misrepresenting Christianity. Because I would immediately say it's a blasphemy if you tell me that we worship God who married Mary and had Jesus a son. But this is a misconception among Muslims, and it's clear that many of them still adhere to this idea. I met still, however, I met some Muslims who are willing to entertain the idea that no, actually it's the Trinity in Christianity is a philosophical idea about plurality within the unity of God. And these Muslims were willing to just um, accept that Christians are not polytheists. 
So yeah, that's um, I hope that's helpful. That is that's really good. Uh, what is what is one of your favorite stories of a Muslim coming to Christ? Uh, I was in North Africa with uh, some of my fr- my students, and I actually I think I mentioned this in the book. So I was in North Africa and hanging out in a village, and then um, the man, one of the locals there, welcomed us, and and that's a good uh, hint here that you would find Muslims are always keen to talk and have conversations. So don't feel so much um, uh, like off from talking with with them. Anyway, the guy said, hey, I would love to show you around in my village. So me and my students walked with him. And then I asked him, when did you become Muslim? (laughs) Of course, (laughs) of course, this is not a question because I know that he was born Muslim. But I was trying to help him think that we all have to come to a decision at some point of accepting what we are believing. Mm. So he said, well, uh, no, I was born Muslim. I said, oh, okay. And then um, I began telling him about parts of the gospel. And and then he said, it's very interesting that you're telling me this. I said, why? He said, because I think, how about you keep going? Tell me more. So I told him. And then he said, two weeks ago, I saw a dream. And in the dream, I entered a mosque. And the mosque was void and dark and empty. I hated it. I ran. And since then, I don't want to be Muslim anymore. So it's interesting that you're telling me about Christ today. Mm. Is it possible that I pray to Christ now? I said, Of course. And he actually prayed. So what I'm saying here is that sometimes an encounter with with a Muslim doesn't necessitate any kind of religious debate or back and forth. Because some Muslims are actually truth seekers. They want to reach the the knowledge of Christ and God. And you as a missionary, you as a preacher, you as an ambassador of Christ mm. is basically there to present the gospel of hope to a Muslim mm. in front of you. So, yeah. That's really, that's really encouraging. Very encouraging. Why, why is reading the Bible with Muslims so important? And what are some good Bible stories to share with them? I always love to share... To share the stories of Jesus' miracles or Jesus' psalm, like Jesus' uh, uh, parables, okay? Um, Because it is very simple in how it connects with Muslims. Um, Like, I always tell, tell Muslims that Jesus once calmed the sea, the roaring sea. And if you ask him to calm the circumstances in your life, Jesus is able. He is God. He can control this. So in a sense, I'm telling every one of my readers or my audience is that I'm saying it is important to understand that many of Muslims around us are what I call, um, like they want to encounter the powerful God. They want to encounter God who is able to intervene in their circumstances. Don't assume that every conversation with a Muslim will have to go through debates and arguments and truth claims of religions. Oh, no, 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 no. Most likely, you will find some Muslims who are simply ready to encounter the divine God, the, the, the glorious God, through a story from the Bible, through a message from Jesus' parables, through a miracle that Jesus performed. Because for Muslims, these are not stories. These are actual events. So that's how these parts of the Bible are really wonderful to read with Muslims, you know. 
That's that's really cool. Uh, what are what is one of the first steps towards developing a genuine loving relationship with a Muslim? Ask about themselves. Ask how are you doing in America? What uh, how is your sibling? How are your siblings? Is your family doing okay in the states? How is it challenging in terms of different language? Uh, how can I pray for you about these circumstances? So this initial connection, and then I also say to my um, readers, my audience, don't hesitate to talk about religion with Muslims. Unlike Westerners, unlike Americans, like in America, you have two topics that are not really off limit, oh, don't go there, like politics and religion, right? These right. are the top excellent topics with Muslims. Muslims always have opinions about politics and Muslims always are ready to talk about religion. If you don't begin a religious conversation with a Muslim in two minutes, he will or she will begin. So <laughs> it's it's just the normal pattern of life, you know? And that's what, that's a good thing because it, like when you speak with a Muslim, they might say, inshallah, inshallah is God willing, okay? So, oh, so you believe that God is sovereign here and whatever he wills? Oh, yeah, of course. So you're you're picking up on, uh, on points from the, the regular conversation, you know? Yeah. So I, th I say, be ready to talk about religion, about faith, ask good questions. I actually have one chapter in my book completely devoted to how to ask questions, leading questions to the main topic of the gospel. Um, in addition, how to um, also begin by asking them about themselves, about what they do, and, and so forth. So I hope that helps. That's that's really good, brother. Really good. But where can people go to find uh, you on social media or learn more about your, your ministry? Well, I teach at Southern Seminary. And indeed, I have a Twitter account. But, you know, I think I'm like my grandmother in dealing with Twitter. It's very... I I don't feel super enthusiastic about consuming my time on there. but. Mostly people can read my articles. Uh, I write for World Opinion and um, other um, uh, outlets. And my books are out there, but particularly The Preacher in Me is uh, out there in reaching your Muslim neighbor with the gospel, the book that we have been talking about that came out with Crossway a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Well, uh, Dr. Abraham, as we wrap up this conversation, and, and uh, it's been really good um, and uh, concluded, uh, can you give us a few takeaways? Love Muslims, befriend them. Don't be concerned about what might happen. Just to begin um, conversation with Muslims. Muslims are not projects. They are people created by God, and God wants to send them the good news through you so begin a conversation don't compromise your belief system because muslims are very particular also about their belief system present christ read the bible with muslims and for some tools and some um, um, methods that you can observe or some questions you can ask your muslim friend you will find this clearly in my book so I would appreciate if you take a read and let me know what you think. Wonderful, brother. Well, guys, uh, we've been talking today with Dr. Ibrahim about his book, Reaching Your Muslim Neighbor for Christ. It's a it's a very helpful book. It's uh, it'll it'll help you to understand your Muslim neighbor. It'll help you to better communicate the gospel to them. And in First Peter three fifteen, we're told to be ready to give it. A reason for the answer for our faith and to do it with gentleness and respect. And so this book will help you to do that with your Muslim neighbor. And so I encourage you guys to go ahead and pick this up. And Dr. Ibrahim, thank you so much for coming on Equipping and Grace. 
I am so grateful for you and thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to the Equipping You and Grace podcast. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, rate us on the app, and share this with your friends and family on social media. If you want to find us on social media, you can find us on Twitter at Servants of Grace, on Instagram at Servants of Grace, or by searching at Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this episode and many others like it on the front page of our website, servantsofgrace.org.